Hi, this is episode 41 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Mondays, I like to give a dead simple explanation for a computer science or development topic. And today, I'm going to walk through how polymorphism works. Out of all the object-oriented programming techniques that I teach, polymorphism seems to be one of the terms that new developers seem to be intimidated by the very most. Personally, I blame Christopher Strachey, the computer scientist who coined the term back in the 1960s. Sometimes computer scientists want to feel smart, so we use complex words, sometimes to our detriment. The easiest way to understand how polymorphism works is to actually break the word down into pieces. Poly, the first part of the word, is Greek for many, and morphism comes from the Greek meaning for shape or for form. So if you put those two root words together, you can translate the word to mean many shapes or forms. As far as a straightforward definition goes for how polymorphism works for development purposes, polymorphism is the ability for a method to have different behavior for an inherited class. As an example, let's take this invoice class. I'm using the Ruby programming language, however the concept is pretty much the same across all languages. Here we have a basic invoice class that prints out some details about the invoice. Now if our application needs the ability to print out shipping labels, for example, it would make sense to create a class called shipping label that inherits from the invoice. That's just basic inheritance from an object-oriented perspective. If the shipping label has the requirement of having to print out a summary that contains 90% of the data that was in the invoice class summary method, instead of duplicating the code, we can use polymorphism to define a method with the same name and then simply add in any custom behavior that the shipping label needs that the invoice doesn't have. The super keyword is telling the program to first look at the parent method and include whatever it returns before processing the rest of the method. If I didn't include super, our new class would completely override the parent class method. And sometimes you do want to do that, which is why it's optional to use super. Another popular way to utilize polymorphism is when you have a parent class with a method that takes no arguments or different arguments. And the child class has a similar method that needs to take arguments. In this example, we have our invoice and shipping label classes again. And this time, the shipping label needs to take an argument to see who signed for the shipment. In cases like this, you can use polymorphism to define the child class's method to take arguments, even if the parent method doesn't. In development circles, there are a number of terms that are used that pretty much mimic this kind of behavior that are helpful to know. Monkey patching and function overloading are both coding techniques are very similar to how polymorphism works. One other important concept to know is that the programming workflow that I walked through today is called ad hoc polymorphism. There are a few other types of polymorphism, namely parametric and subtyping. However, when it comes to traditional object-oriented programming, when developers mention polymorphism, they're typically meaning the process that I just walked through. I hope that this helps you understand how polymorphism works and that you'll be able to use it in a future project.